Welcome back, everyone. Glad to see you tuning in. Laszlo Montgomery here with another Chinese sayings podcast. Unlike pretty much every single Chinese saying presented since 2016, this one, too, is rooted in history. And today's Chengyu, Tui Bi San She, doesn't disappoint. This one comes to us courtesy of the commentaries of Zuo, the Zuo Chuan. This is one of the more well-known stories from these warring states times. But before we get to it, let's look at the four characters that make up the saying. Tui Bi San She. Tui means to move back or to retreat. And Bi means to avoid or evade. San is the number three. And she means a house or a shed or a hut, but it also has an archaic usage that means a distance of 30 li, which is about 15 kilometers or 9.3 miles. So, move back, avoid three she. Three she would be 90 li, or about 45 kilometers or 28 miles. No hint here about what this might mean, so let's get to the story. A good one from the Warring States period concerning the kingdoms of Jin and Chu. And the headliner of our story is none other than Chong'ar, who one day became the heroic Duke Wen of Jin. This is the famous story from the 7th century BC involving Duke Xian of Jin. He was a warrior, and during his long 26-year reign, he made a lot of conquests and expanded the size of Jin state. In 672, he defeated the barbarian Western Rong tribe, and among the many spoils of war Duke Xian took were two sisters from these Rong people, Li Ji and Shao Ji. There were so many femme fatales of this late Bronze Age in China, and Li Ji, concubine Li, she was among that loathsome aggregation. She was known as the Yi Da Yao Ji, the Witch of the Age, because of her devious acts. Now, I don't want to step on any toes over at the China History Podcast, so let's just cut to the chase about what all went down between the years 657 and 651 BC. The backstory to this is one of the most popular themes in all of Chinese history. It lasted all the way to the end of the Qing Dynasty in the 20th century, and that was the scheming royal concubine trying to kill the crown prince to get her own son on the throne. Duke Xian of Jin... Was he ever enamored by these two sisters, Li Qi and Shao Qi? And Li Qi, she had a son with Duke Xian named Xi Qi. And both sisters used their easy access to Duke Xian to convince him to get rid of his two sons, the crown prince Shen Sheng and the star of our tale Chong Er. The crown prince, eh, he got all tangled up in a conspiracy conceived by Li Qi, and he ended up killing himself. So she made fast work of the crown prince. And then she turned her sights on Chong'ar. She was able to get her son, Prince Xi Qi, onto the Jin throne. But not for long. He gets bumped off a month later. Upon Li Qi's urging, Duke Xian sent out orders to arrest his second son, Chong'ar. But Chong'ar got wind of these events and fled Jin before his father's forces could catch up to him. And for 19 years... This prince endured a life of hardship and exile from his Jin homeland. Chong'ar traveled around the warring states of 7th century BC China, going from kingdom to kingdom. In a rare period of respite from his wanderings, Chong'ar once found himself in the powerful kingdom of Chu, one of the hegemons of the warring states period. And there he was granted an audience with King Cheng of Chu. Even though Chong'ar was exiled and down on his luck at the time, the king of Chu saw that he was a talented and ambitious man and predicted that he would go on to accomplish great things one day. Thus, he hosted Chong'ar handsomely at the Chu court, treating him like a visiting prince. One day, the king of Chu threw a banquet in Chong'ar's honor, and over the course of the festivities, the king asked him, "'If you ever return to Jin and regain the kingdom that is yours by right?' Will you repay me for all the kindness and generosity I have shown you during your stay in my kingdom? Chong'ar replied at once, Oh, your majesty, with what can I repay you? You possess a bounty of beautiful women, slaves, jewels, and fine silks. As for rare birds and feathers, ivory, and precious animal skins, the kingdom of Chu is renowned everywhere in China for these. What can a lowly state like Jin offer the king of Chu? 
The king said, well, be that as it may, how would you repay me for my kindness and hosting you during this time? Chongar thought for a moment and replied, if, owing to the kindness of friends such as yourself, I am indeed able to return to rule over Jin, I vow to remain allies with your kingdom of Chu. If our armies ever cross swords, I vow to retreat for 90 Li first to give your army the advantage before engaging. Remember, 90 Li was equal to 3 Sha, which was the equivalent to 45 kilometers. So now you know where this Cheng Yu is going. In a few short years, with the help of Duke Mu of Qin, who had also hosted Chong'er, indeed, this exiled prince was able to resume his rightful place as the ruler of Qin. And it was Chong'er who was also remembered as the capable and wise Duke Wen of Qin, Qin Wengong. And thanks to the policies enacted during his reign from 636 to 628 BC, the state of Qin grew to become the most powerful among all the warring states. But... Mighty Jin would begin its decline in the 6th century BC and ultimately suffer the historic partition of Jin in the 5th century that divided the land into the new states of Zhao, Han, and Wei. So we could see where this Cheng Yu comes from. The promise Chong'er gave to King Cheng of Chu, Chong'er swore if they ever met on the field of battle, he would tui bi, he'd withdraw and move out of the way. San Shu. Again, three sha is about 45 kilometers. And this would allow Chu to gain an advantage if the two sides met on the battlefield. And in doing thusly, Chong'ar, now the Duke of Jin, would have honored his promise to King Cheng of Chu. Well, one day in 633 BC, this indeed came to pass that the armies of Chu and Jin met in battle. And to fulfill his vow to King Cheng of Chu, made so many years ago, Duke Wen of Jin ordered his forces to Tui Bi San She, retreat for 90 Li from the Chu army. The Chu army seemed to be unawares of the promise that Duke Wen had made to King Cheng. The Chu generals watched the Jin forces retreating three She and misinterpreted this, believing they were retreating out of fear. Therefore, the Chu army became overconfident and pressed on full speed ahead, believing they had the Jin soldiers on the run. But this was a disorganized attack launched too quickly before they were fully ready to mount such an operation. Thus, the Jin army was able to defeat Chu in battle, ironically because of Duke Wen's promise during his exile. So this Chinese saying, Tui Bi San She, has come down to us to mean figuratively, to avoid conflict, often with positive connotations of beating a strategic retreat. You're not running away, you're just ensuring you could survive to fight another day. So no matter at your place of employment, at a board meeting of your condo, in an argument with your partner or loved one, or if you're a politician, sometimes it's better to tui bi san she before you act too rashly or not think something through. And so... There it is. Our thanks once again to Zhuo Qiu Ming for giving us this one, the commentaries of Zhuo, the gift that keeps on giving, for Cheng Yu's anyway. And burning the midnight oil over at the Cheng Yu Yan Jiu Zhongxin is reliable Emma, keeping those hits coming. Thanks, Emma. Well, that's going to be it for now. Laszlo Montgomery here signing off from baking hot Los Angeles, California, and thankfully not Phoenix. Better get used to this weather, everyone. Think about coming back next time, and it won't be long, for another informational episode of the Chinese Sayings Podcast.